So let's go now to the next talk by Edward Musayev on non-abelian U-dualities. Hello. Let me share the screen. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for <clears throat> Uh, providing me this opportunity to report on the recent developments in our field. Um, and I would like to speak about uh, the uh, symmetry called non-abelian U-duality that has been recently found in, uh, so to say, M theory, or basically to say, uh, supergravity, supergravity backgrounds, I would say, 11 dimensional supergravity backgrounds. And in particular, on our results um, with uh, Yuho Sakatani and Kirill Bubarev. So before, I will um, briefly overview what happens for uh, string theory. I mean, for 10 dimensional backgrounds, or uh, in this case, in, in the way how I present that, for two dimensional SIGO models, uh, just to set up the stage. And uh, I would avoid uh, uh, talking much about the usage of T duality. Just uh, let us just agree that T duality is something that we like. And uh, yes and uh, uh, discuss uh, the precise form of, of how it, uh, of how the symmetry rise in, in two-dimensional string theory. Um, uh, so uh, I start with the abelian duality, which, uh, and the name comes uh, from the abelian uh, U1 isometry, which uh, one has in, uh, in a sigma model. And then in this case, sigma model can be represented as, uh, in terms of, of a field bind, uh, taking values in the target space, and this field bind, and the standard standard procedure for to show to, uh, to show abelian T duality transformation is to add the Lagrange multiplier, which is red here with uh, x tilde is Lagrange multiplier, and a is some uh, additional is some auxiliary vector field, and then the point is that if I integrate out uh, uh, if I integrate out x tilde, then uh, this uh, impose the condition dA equals zero, let me write this, which implies that A is, uh, uh, is an exact form. And I go back to the usual SIGO model as in the form, we, we know that with the 10, uh, 10 um, scalar fields, X mu uh, with mu running from zero to eight and X nine. Uh, alternatively, one can integrate out AI, the vector field, which uh, doesn't introduce x9, but instead introduces x tilde as a scalar field, which will, from the target space perspective, is a dual field, uh, is a dual coordinate. And then the corresponding background fields, they somehow transform this E, uh, which uh, encodes the metric and the B field, they somehow transform and the transformation rules can be written explicitly in terms of uh, so-called Boucher rules. And this is the old story coming from the old 80s. Uh, and uh, the immediate question which arises here is the, um, is the following, uh, whether it is possible to perform this uh, transformation for not an abelian, not the abelian uh, isometry group, which is a U1, but uh, along a non-abelian, some given non-abelian isometry group G. And uh, in principle, this has been done for, uh, for target spaces, which are itself uh, themselves uh, represented by a group like in this form, target spaces, which are a product of some space so, uh, and, and the group, uh, or uh, in terms of cosets. Now, I write here, the formulas given here are for group manifolds. In principle, one can do this for cosets as well. Okay, so one starts with some non-abelian uh, gen uh, group uh, generated by t uh, some t's with uh, structure constants, which are non-zero. That's important here because the Lagrange multiplier, instead of uh, having uh, GA here, it has this, uh, a non-abelian field strength fi. This i is the algebraic index. So that's important because uh, before one could one could uh, thought about uh, this nine index uh, as a uh, as a target space index. Uh, uh, actually, it's not the correct way of thinking. This nine should be must be understood, and the i must be understood as an algebraic index. And then the standard algorithm is precisely the same. I integrate out x tilde. I obtain the usual SIGO model because a becomes um, uh, how it's called, a pure gauge, like here. Or I can integrate out AI, uh, the, um, the vector field, and then the, X, uh, the corresponding uh, Maurer-Cartan forms, they disappear. So I don't, I don't generate this G, 
g minus 1 to g dg. And instead, I uh, end up with a model which contains xi tilde, which are dual coordinates from the point of view of the target space. And in principle, it's possible to write some generalization of Boucher rules here, but these Boucher rules will be uh, the, these Boucher rules will be ODD transformations for target uh, fields. And that's uh, sort of nice because we know that usual abelian to world is also an ODD transformation. Uh, here, but here, this ODD transformation is uh, more subtle. It's not doesn't act on the on the wall volume indices, it, it acts on these algebraic indices. And that's uh, a more recent story from uh, beginning of 90s. And then <clears throat> One can uh, summarize uh, these uh, uh, summarize some features of the you know, of these symmetries. The, the, uh, the very first, uh, um, the most important for us uh, feature here is that abelian duality always generates backgrounds with U1 isometries, uh, meaning that you start with U1 isometry, you end up with U1 isometry, and then you can perform duality again along the same U1 isometry, and you go back to the initial background. Uh, and it produces some mass between fluxes, generates on geometric fluxes, and so on. So that's uh, sort of usage of, of T duality. And in contrast to that, non abelian T duality does not generate backgrounds with the same iso isometry G. So you start with the background with the group manifold, so to say, uh, which has isometry group G, perform this non abelian T duality, and this uh, isometry. Uh, I would I can say almost, but I think it always. Uh, is becomes hidden. You, can, you don't have this, the same isometry in the dual background. And then the, the immediate question is whether it is possible to uh, to dualize back. I mean, you end up with some background, and then you want to uh, you, do, you want to go back some somehow from this background. And then there are also uh, for this reason uh, usages of non-abelian duality are sort of different. And in this this is usually. Um, employed to generate uh, some new backgrounds and for non-CFT holography and so on. And then the question, uh, is it possible to perform inverse of non-abelian duality? Has the answer yes. And uh, for that one should use uh, in special algebraic structure, which uh, is hidden behind the non-abelian duality symmetries, which is called classical Greenfield double or uh, Greenfield double algebra. And that uh, has been, I think, first introduced in the paper by Klimchik and Sivara in 95, and then developed further in many other papers. And I just mentioned this paper by von Unge in 2005. And the idea is uh, the following. Here I write uh, in a little bit different notations in terms of uh, target space indices, which are more convenient here. That is the following. We start with the usual uh, two-dimensional Sigma model, which is uh, probably uh, written in the notations which uh, everyone would recall when one when think about string theory. So one has G field, the B field, and then uh, these are con these are combined in this uh, matrix E. <coughs> now suppose that there is some uh, right action of group on the on this target space, which might not necessarily be isometric in the usual sense, uh, which means that that uh, that this might not be zero in general. I mean, we can we keep this non-zero, the last the last piece, and this is also non-zero. So this guy is a lead derivative of the Lagrangian, since v is not an isometry. Lead derivative is non-zero. Uh, the the current might not be closed, uh, since this is not, not not an isometry. So the the delta, but these two might might cancel each other in principle, and we consider uh, here one can uh, find three different cases. The first one is uh, the case of the usual abelian isometry when uh, when the uh, algebra of these vector fields which generate the isometry is abelian and uh, the current is closed. So this is the usual uh, abelian isometry of sigma model, and the and the story is uh, precisely as an abelian t duality. Then uh, f might not might be non-zero. This would give you a while uh, did a while. Mm, while J is still closed, and that would give you non-abelian duality. And then, as I said, both of these can be non-zero. G is not closed. Uh, lead derivative is non-zero. Non but altogether, they might uh, cancel uh, each other, and the transformation of the action uh, is still zero. So in principle, it is still an isometry of the action. Uh, but uh, is realized uh, in a very fancy way. It's not isometry of, of, of the target. It might not be isometry of the target, and it, uh, the currents uh, are 
not, not closed, but the uh, Sigma model uh, is isometric under these transformations. And then the idea of Poisson Lee to is the following. Uh, let us consider a very special case such that the uh, D of the current takes this form. This is a very special case. In, in principle, it can be any, but we consider this case for some, um, for some F tildes, which are uh, such a constant of some algebra, meaning that they satisfy Jacobi identity. And lead derivative of, uh, so to, 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 have, to have delta uh, of the action zero, we need to impose that the lead derivative of the Lagrangian has the same form, so the, for them to cancel each other. And then this implies severe constraints of these two. These two imply severe constraints on the, on the target space fields. And uh, this can be written in this uh, fancy form. So these are uh, quadratic uh, different nonlinear differential equations, which, uh, uh, which depend on what F tilde you choose. And then there is, uh, apparently I can uh, act on this uh, by lead derivative again. On the left-hand side, I have some uh, usual uh, commutation, uh, commutation relation commutator of two lead derivatives and some known expression. On the right-hand side, I again substitute uh, the, the same formula and I obtain F tilde squared. And this gives me some integrability constraints or compatibility constraints on F tilde. And these are written here and have a really remarkable form because precisely these constraints are uh, the ones which one finds in the theory of B algebras or co-algebras or in the theory of Greenfield algebra. And I will, I will uh, talk about this more <clears throat> a little bit later, but right now the point here is that this constraint is completely symmetric in F and F tilde. If I replace F and F tilde, uh, if I replace F and F tilde, then nothing will change and it's completely symmetric. And then uh, the idea is that let, let me do so. Let me, um, since F tilde is also a structure constant, let, let me do so. Let me write instead of six, write the same formula, but for some, for, for a different background given by E tilde with a different V tilde, but with F, which, which is not F tilde, but the structure constant, which was from the very beginning, the iso which is given by isometry group. So this structure constant is given by is given by the isometry group which we have <clears throat> which we had from the very beginning, while f tilde is given by the algebra by this uh, so to say algebra of uh, uh, of currents. <clears throat> now, the Poisson Lee t duality is a transformation which relates e and e tilde. So if you manage to find all this stuff to satisfy all the comp compatibility constraints, then uh, this uh, E tilde would be your Poisson Lee T dual of, uh, of the initial background given by E. Uh, it's, it, it's not obvious from this, from, from what I write here, it's a separate, uh, uh, separate proof is needed for that. And it's sort of long, it takes time. So I don't, even include, I don't include it here, just believe me that it, it is there. One can, one can uh, show that uh, sigma model on E tilde is equivalent to the sigma model on E. That's that's the point of the paper by Primchik and, uh, uh, sorry, Sivira. Okay, now, uh, what's the algebraic structure behind that? For how, how, one, how one does uh, this, how one finds this F tilde? The, behind the structure, the algebraic structure behind that is the classical Greenfield double, which is, uh, best uh, uh, represented by minor triple decomposition. And the point here is that we have a, an even uh, linear space, which can be decomposed into two subspaces, G and G tilde, which are of the same, <coughs> which are of the same dimension, and eta, which is a quadratic form on that. And uh, G and G tilde are both algebras, generated by generators TA and TA tilde with some such a constant F and F tilde. And the quadratic, quadratic form is defined like that. So it basically it tells that uh, it just uh, somehow it entwines the G, G and G tilde generators from, from, G and, from G tilde. And then there is a compatibility constraint uh, saying uh, that G or G tilde is a B algebra. So I can think that G is a B algebra with uh, 
F tilde defining me the coproduct, or I can think that D tilde is a B algebra with F defining its coproduct. So they are completely symmetric. And then uh, already at this stage, we see that D and D tilde enter uh, completely uh, symmetric in this story. And then one can start with G and construct geometry and uh, define sigma model on that target space or start with G tilde and construct geometry uh, defined on the on, on this uh, on the other uh, target space, and uh, since these two uh, define the same uh, Greenfield double, the statement is the following: that uh, possibly dual backgrounds correspond to different realizations of a given Greenfield double. Uh, when you switch, um, when you interchange G and G tilde, you consider a trivial uh, possibly to duality sort of. It's, it's not trivial when you write in the in fields, but it's trivial on the algebraic level. In principle, there are more, uh, there are less uh, obvious uh, transformations which uh, can generate the Poisson-Lee pluralities, uh, producing uh, not a pair of dual backgrounds, but a multiple of backgrounds, all of which generate uh, equivalent sigma models. And if I, uh, to, to, to the level I, uh, I aware, this um, symmetry has not been proven to be quantum. But I, I, I might be mistaken. <clears throat> okay. Now, there is a very convenient language for writing this Greenfield double, because it has this eta, uh, the quadratic form eta. Uh, it naturally imposes an ODD structure on that, uh, on, on the generators. And... Uh, suggests us to combine the two generators into some double um, set of, of generators. And then uh, the whole algebra can be written in this uh, very convenient form with F capital ABC containing only F and F tilde, only these uh, indices. In principle, there, can, there is uh, independent definition of, the, of, this, uh, of this form. Uh, okay, now the quadratic form is the usual invariant uh, invariant tensor of ODD and the isotropic subgroup G or G tilde is picked by this condition, meaning that uh, if I uh, tensor product, uh, if I consider tensor product of generators of, from this isotropic, sub, of this isotropic subalgebra, subalgebra. And uh, uh, and contract uh, such that it should uh, uh, so basically, so basically the, the statement is that this tensor product doesn't contain singlet of ODD. And uh, you one can easily see that uh, this kind of uh, thing doesn't, cannot be contracted into a singlet of ODD, uh, while this can. So if I just uh, choose TA, that would be a proper um, isotopic subalgebra. It's, it, this is a different definition of um, different form of the same definition of isotropic subalgebra, which, which is useful to, for generalization to 11 dimensions. That will give us uh, um, isotropic subalgebra for exceptional genital algebras. And then in this form, um, the story can be generalized to 11 dimensions. Before, to go, uh, before going there, let me uh, give some statements summarizing what uh, has been done so far. So we know that there is exist a perturbative symmetry of string theory backgrounds in 10 dimensions, which we call T-duality. And if I put uh, string theory on a torus d-dimensional, the duality the duality group is ODD, and that's naturally uh, has the uh, naturally acts on these uh, generators of Greenfield double. And then uh, we know that uh, abelian non-abelian t-dualities are special cases of more general poisson lee duality which in turn corresponds to different realizations of a given uh, the double Greenfield algebra. And now the statement uh, of this is known story from 90s. And uh, a more recent statement from uh, two years ago, I think, is that there exists a U-duality extension of the construction, which of this construction of uh, T-dualities, which is, will now be based on exceptional Zinfield doubles, which are also a new, new construction. Uh, and all that is based on the fact that a billion U-duality group for uh, 11 minus dimensional gravity is EDD. And now we just need to construct the same thing as here, but not for ODD uh, group, but for EDD. Uh, why, why do we need that? We need that to describe, uh, to find symmetries of 11 dimensional supergravity, which is a strong coupling limit uh, of uh, M theory, strong coupling limit of, of string theory dynamics. 
and that is described in terms of uh, fields of Euler inverse gravity, which is a metric in the three form instead of the B field as in 10 dimensions. And uh, if we impose uh, kappa symmetry on supermembrane, we obtain uh, 11 dimensional supergravity equations of motion, which correspond to the this very well known action. And then if I put this action on a torus, I will have a U duality. Uh, I will observe U duality symmetry with that somehow acts on these uh, compactified fields GMN and CMN and key. Uh, and this and U duality groups are different depending on uh, which. Um, on depending on D, on which torus uh, you put this on. Okay, <clears throat> now the construction. Uh, the first step is to uh, put all generators of well, this exceptional digital field double into uh, some representation of, uh, of EDD. The representation is chosen uh, according to counting of uh, winding modes of membrane on the corresponding uh, torus. Uh, or decomposition of E11, if you would like to think in, this, in these terms. So for example, for E6, this is 27 dimensional and the, and the exceptional field algebra will be 27 dimensional algebra. Next, the algebra is not a Lie algebra, but it is a Leibniz algebra. This uh, FABC is not anti-symmetric in, uh, in AB, but it must satisfy Leibniz identity. So that's the first part of the story. We introduce generators, we introduce the structure constant and we impose the Leibniz identity, which gives us some quadratic constraint, which basically Jacobi identity for F, F tilde, and some uh, something which generalizes the uh, compatibility of the coproduct for uh, for the usual field double. And this has been done in uh, uh, in uh, wait, it cannot be seven, it should be twenty in nineteen and twenty. Uh, <clears throat> okay, now how do we choose the isotropic subalter? Because, for example, for E6, the uh, exceptional different algebra is 27 dimensional, and we cannot just divide it by half and say that one half is uh, is our algebra. Apparently, we need to we need to uh, single out some six dimensional subalgebra, and the and the uh, re recipe is precisely uh, the same. You, I just consider it as a product of, of, of this isotopic algebra and say that only those generators correspond that, uh, which whose, uh, um, how this is called? Uh, okay, if I, whose projection on R2, on the representation R2, which is, which is different depending on the, on the group, on, on the U-duality group, uh, must be zero. And this is, uh, for those familiar with exception of the theory, this is some generalization of, or this is some algebraic formulation of this section constraint. So this is equivalent to the section constraint. Okay, for for ODD for the for the, in green is the the case of Poisson Lie duality. For the for that R two is the singlet, and for other groups, it's uh, you see it's something more fancy. Uh, for example, for uh, OD, uh, as we discussed, I cannot compose a singlet of G only from of G or only of G tilde. That's why I can choose G or G tilde to uh, uh, reproduce my um, geometric. This subalgebra is called geometric. The geometric subalgebra, uh, and for exceptionally groups, that that depends. Now, uh, the second condition is that G, such a defined, uh, is a Lie algebra. That's why. Uh, this um, the circle product uh, projected on the on G must satisfy this condition, and then uh, it must be uh, anti-symmetric. FABC must be anti-symmetric in AB, and then G uh, should act on the rest of AD by some inherited adjoint action. Okay, <clears throat> simple example is uh, four-dimensional exceptional gene field. Uh, it's 10-dimensional exceptional gene field algebra, which corresponds to compactification of four-dimensional torus. It contains 10 generators. Four of them are geometric. The others are dual in some sense. Structure constants are the usual FABC and some, uh, some dual FA with three indices up and some dual ZA. And then the algebra has this form, which not Cannot, I cannot say that it is suggestive, but to, just to, uh, to make some feeling of how that looks like. 
So it's not it's not really uh, it's not really uh, trivial. I mean, it it, it has some structure. Uh, now, the next step is to construct uh, to introduce some geometry on top of that, and the geometry is introduced in the usual uh, way. Using non-linearization of uh, of a given uh, uh, element, so I just pick the isometric subalgebra G, exponentiate that, get the group, then I uh, ele group element, then I compute a joint action of this group element of the G small is a elem group element of the isometric uh, subgroup, isometric group. Let's say better to say. Uh, uh, now that guy can act on the generators and. Uh, the result uh, is can be encoded in terms of this matrix, and precisely this matrix will give me uh, will encode my target the target fields. Apparently, G so these are the coordinates. Apparently, G G depends on X. Then the matrix M will also depend on X, and E will also depend on X. So these are all non-trivial functions on X, and this is just a unity matrix. It's a constant just to make indices work properly. And this E is a generalized frame field, which is element of the coset, uh, which is a factor of the U of E, the U duality group, uh, with respect to its maximal uh, compact subalgebra, sub subgroup, the usual story uh, of non-linearization. And uh, to feel how that looks like in terms of the usual fields, uh, one must uh, perform, uh, first perform a uh, Kaluzic line it's not called scalar reduction, but field decomposition. In terms, for example, for E6 covariant parameterization, I start with 11 dimensional fields, dec uh, decompose that in uh, five dimensional external and six dimensional. I will call them X internal, but they still depend on the on the coordinates. I don't I don't perform the reduction. And then this guy, which contains the metric, the fields coming from metric, fields coming from uh, from the three form and C M and K and C mu rho, which then has to be Hodge dualized, Hodge dualized. And then these three they compose the generalized frame, which can be written in terms of matrices like that. So it's a pretty nonlinear expression, but then we need uh, to have that uh, upper <coughs> upper triangle. And then the external metric also uh, contributes. You see, external metric sits here and phi sits here, and that also contributes the generalized field by. Generalized frame field, and then there is uh, uh, generalized Lie derivative, which contains derivatives only with respect to the usual coordinates. Here, no, nothing depends on the dual coordinates. It's not exceptional to theory; it's the usual supergravity, but written in terms of uh, EDD covariant in, in EDD covariant notations. Just to introduce this FABC, and this FABC is precisely the same structure constant as we have had before. Uh, for exceptional digital algebra. That's how it generates on the geometry level. Now, how the duality works. Uh, now we have uh, the structure constants, we have fields hidden in the generalized, in the generalized frame field, and uh, duality is just EDD rotation of generators. This matrix C is precisely the matrix which performs this, to do, uh, this uh, Nambuli duality rotation. I will uh, discuss uh, later why it's called Nambuli. So every index is somehow uh, transformed by is apparently how transformed by this uh, matrix C, and uh, the transformed field bind you just encode back, uh, uh, decode back in terms of eleven dimensional fields and obtain the dual background like that. This doesn't transform. This is too constant. That's how I, I, I that's how I obtain the transformation of the external backgrounds of the external metric. So this is this is the rule. It looks simple, but the most complicated uh, the most complicated um, condition here is that the new generators uh, form also form an, an exceptional gene field algebra, and this appears to be the most uh, uh, the most subtle place here where uh, to find such C which produce you again an EDA. We managed to find uh, some restricted, restricted examples so which were. Uh, for C, which all, all, always gives you uh, EDA. But let me do it uh, step by step. Uh, so examples are the following. So 
For non-ability duality, all non-trivial examples are based on coset manifolds or group, group manifolds. I'm, I'm not aware of uh, those which are beyond this uh, class. Then it seems that uh, for SL5, exception does, except from the input algebra, doesn't uh, allow to perform non abelian duality. And then uh, uh, in this paper with the Yuho, we generated some non-trivial examples of non abelian dualities, which are uh, essentially 11-dimensional. Some of them are uplifts of Poisson Litty duality. Uh, some of them are dualities between M theory and type 2B theory. These are not really interesting. Some of them are generalized young Baxter deformations, which are also not really interesting because we have other instruments to generate that. And only these pieces, which are small except extensions of, of the usual Poisson Litty duality, are the ones which are interesting. <clears throat> okay, let me just briefly show you the example, which is not really, not, not really interesting in the sense that it's not EDS5. Idea something cross something, which we like. This is uh, mostly a model toy model example because we start with some some algebra which we found found in a, uh, in a book uh, like given by these expressions. Uh, for some technical reasons, modulus of C zero must be smaller than one, and. Uh, the, the metric is, uh, this, this is some artificial background, but it satisfies the uh, course of motion of the dimensional super gravity. It's, in, in, this, in this sense, it's a perfectly defined background, but it's artificial uh, in a sense. Now, uh, we, uh, we find uh, a dual uh, background data, which uh, contains, uh, which includes uh, dual structure constants, which you see, uh, I have, I generate a dual, uh, such a constant, but still there is some uh, such a constant which was there from the very beginning uh, with three indices, not four indices. And that's that's why it's on top of Poisson Lisi duality. And then, not, not, not for this reason, uh, not only, not this is not the only one, but this is a hint that this is on top of that. And this is the, the you do background, which also is not very uh, suggestive. Some background. And then again, we check that it's a proper background of, uh, of 11 dimensional supergravity. Uh, what's interesting about this is that first, it is solution of 11 dimensional supergravity equations, but with the wrong sign. It has two times, uh, two minus signs in the signature, and that's called M star theory. So it looks like that the transformation somehow contains a time like U duality. So in principle, one can perform again time like the usual time like abelian duality to go back to the normal uh, normal background, but we were not able to find that. Then this is pure eleven dimensional; it's not an uplift. And the interesting thing is that if I identify uh, these coordinate z, say that it belongs some, to some cycle, uh, then the background is a u fold because if I go around this cycle, the background is rotated by uh, by some non geometric generator of SO five comma five. And that's an interesting uh, story because you usually, indeed, you, in principle, uh, when you perform uh, U duality, you put you are able to generate uh, U faults, and that's uh, precisely the case here. Now, uh, let me uh, give me some conclusion because I'm beyond all the time already. Uh, so, conclusions are the following: exceptional geometry allows to. Uh, extend the notion of Poisson Lee dualities to symmetries of M theory of 11 dimensional backgrounds, which you call Nambuli Lee U dualities. Nambuli U dualities is that um, one can associate some Nambu Poisson structures um, with exceptional green field algebras in the same way as you, um, as you associate Poisson Lee structures with, um, with double green field algebra. And then this would give you the so called generalized Young Baxter equation for certain uh, pi. Now we generated several examples. There are much more of them. I just showed you one, the most interesting one. There are much more of them. All of them are uh, not, 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 not really suggestive because all of them are model backgrounds. So, because the pr problem is that um, all of them are based on group manifolds and uh, no rule for cosets is known. Like the most interesting are cosets. And this is not known. And then uh, also among the examples are generalized young Baxter deformations. They are also non-bully duality transformations, but these are known uh, for any backgrounds uh, with at least three examples, not only for group manifolds, for any background. You can start with Schwarzschild and perform that, uh, but they're using uh, slightly different tools. This tool, algebraic tool, is only for group manifolds. 
apparently there are since this is a very recent uh, story there is a huge field uh, for activity here for example uh, needed is uh, classification of exceptional gene field algebras as we had as we have at least for a small dimensional double gene field algebras and then we need to not be needed for coset uh, spaces to generate more uh, sensible examples it would be really nice to somehow generalize the notion of the twist because that would allow to perform non-abelian deformations of uh, super theories due to main theory backgrounds. And then there is a huge uh, story related to number mechanics uh, uh, and the integrability and, and all that uh, stuff, which is beyond uh, the scope of this talk. Uh, and thank you for your attention. Sorry for taking six minutes more. Okay, thank you. Um... So um, we have still a few minutes before the next talk should start. So um, uh, I think we can look for, for a question now, if there is some, someone eager to just hang on. Um, I don't see any hands up. So why don't we, actually, why don't we just get raise up and stretch our legs and be back in three minutes because then we will start the next talk and then um, then we can uh, be just on time for that okay thank you thank you for the talk <laughs>